So this is uh, the panel about technologies, using technologies in reusable packaging. Uh, my name is Sean Stockman. I'm with Return Center. Uh, just introduce our panelists here. And um, Return Center is uh, a IT company focused on reverse and loop logistics. We provide the transportation uh, between different parts of the supply chain and the data around tracking those logistics. Uh, we'll just go down the road here and um, introduce each other and your companies, please. Good morning, I'm uh, Gail Wong. I'm an IoT product manager, so I own a couple different uh, solutions that ATT offers. One is trailer and container tracking. Um, <clears throat> and we incorporate all of that IoT data to actually take business action for the enterprise application. So I own all the partner integrations into, into the SAP's uh, Salesforce so that you can use that and, and uh, apply that into the business. I'm Dave Kalin. I'm the Vice President of Marketing and Sales for Paxil. Uh, we are a, a pallet, plastic pallet manufacturer, and uh, one of the key responsibilities I have is helping source and determine a variety of different devices that can be embedded into our pallets to uh, capture all kinds of data, which we'll be talking about in a few minutes. Good morning, uh, my name is Ernest Wood, I'm with C2IT, and uh, we are an integrator slash solutions provider. Uh, we do anything having to do with uh, generating, applying barcodes, uh, reading them back from any number of sources, and then making decisions based on uh, the information that's presented back to you. So the purpose of the panel really is to talk about uh, some of the information that's in the white paper that uh, uh, Tim Debus mentioned in the last session. Uh, this white paper is available on reusables.org. And um, the purpose of the white paper originally was to provide some guidance and education about technologies that are commonly used uh, on reusable transport packaging. And uh, it took almost two years to pull together. Uh, it took a lot of different expertise from a wide range of uh, companies in this industry to offer their insight give some definitions of standard terms, and ultimately try to lead to uh, how to go through a decision-making process. So uh, it was an educational experience for me just because I feel like I'm in my own little bubble and a lot of people who know their one technology really well, uh, this was an attempt to kind of broaden that, that vision, which I think we did. Um, so I want to go down the line and just uh, have each of us kind of explain uh, one of the things that was a surprise to them or uh, an observation in there that uh, they thought they hadn't known before or, or was meaningful. You want to start at the end? Uh, I think the, the biggest thing that I took away from the white paper as far as when you're starting to, to look at using any type of new technology, be it reusable packaging or, or any other, is uh, uh, getting the, the key stakeholders together and, and mapping out a plan before you start investing and and then looking forward to seeing what are the uh, unintended consequences of, of what you're what you're trying to do with it uh, for me it was uh, a wow moment uh, I thought I knew a lot about all the technology that was available and how it worked but uh, it clearly points out to me that right now about everything we want to do the technology is there it's working, it's available. It's now how do you use it in your product lines and what is your ultimate goal with it? Uh, for our company, it's, there's a variety of things, but it's data capture because we're big, big believers that reusable packaging, and in our case, pallets, are the low end of capturing supply chain data. And all this data, think about it, all these reusable assets, if they were all enabled with these devices, we capture all this data. As long as it's accurate, it will eventually lead to the ultimate goal of artificial intelligence. So that was my big walk away from this paper that, wow, it's here and it's here now. Yeah, and you guys are probably wondering why is AT&T at a packaging expo, right? So if you remember 25 years ago, right, we at and launched an advertising campaign called You Will. Right, and 25 years ago, we said you will have a video conference with your child over your phone and be able to do that instantly, right? 
as we grew the network, and, and now today we have over 58 million connected devices, 270 gig, or petabytes of data that go across our data. That is, that is just the, the forefront of what's going to happen now, right? We have connected cars, we have connected things. Eventually now you're going to see you know, connected pallets, and, and the idea is what are you going to do with that data in your own business to now visualize, right? You got AI, machine learning, there's a lot of acronyms coming out, augmented reality, right? If you're servicing a machine here, now you can have a technician visually look at and annotate, hey, are these wires backwards, right? So as we now look at, you know, how do we now improve and reuse uh, packaging because the environment calls for it, let's, let's understand and how do we apply the technology that Dave and, and uh, Ed talked about. So for me, uh, from the very beginning, I naively thought that at the end of the day, we could put together a little decision tree about how do I decide which of these technologies to use. And over months and months of uh, conversations and discussions and arguments, we finally all realized that that's really not a linear process at all. And so you will not find a really quick and easy decision tree in this white paper because I'm not sure that it's possible. So for me, the the eye-opening moment was realizing that my little naive dream of having an easy way to decide how, which technologies and how to apply them is just not out there. Uh, as you'll see, there's a lot of overlap in terms of which technologies can provide certain kinds of data. There's overlap in the infrastructure that you might need, in the communications technologies it takes to to pull it uh, so that you have uh, use of it, and in the software that you might use to analyze it and apply it. So uh, unfortunately, the end of the story is it's more complicated than you might think, in case you didn't already think it's complicated enough. Um, so on that vein, uh, the second question posed to the panel is really, with all the technology that's already out there, what are some of the biggest trends that we see that's going to take this to the next level? Um, so for me, uh, I think I would start with IoT being uh, the, the key connection uh, from a data gathering hardware device out there that's sitting on a pallet or a bin or a crate to getting it to where it's ultimately able to be analyzed and uh, derive the real value of that data. And I think that's one of the most underappreciated um, components of this whole industry is the data that's actually going to be available and deciding how it, how it can be applied to solve a particular problem or a bunch of problems. Because uh, oftentimes the same data point will mean something very different to every different part of an organization where you know, the inventory people are just trying to not lose a assets, where the marketing people are looking for insight into how consumers are using their products. So the whole scope in between, every department is going to get some use for it. So for me, that, that IoT connectivity from a uh, data capturing device to the software that allows a user to apply it is a, is a huge trend that I think is going to really uh, affect every industry associated with reusable packaging. You want to go next? Yeah, and so um, we're all about the application and the solutions, right? So for us, I'm like the $10 a month question, right? So this asset tracker, what does it do, right? It tells me where location. It tells me what the temperature could be, shock. You know, if I dropped it, where did it happen, right? So ultimately, if I sell a farmer, right, who, who knows only about farming, right, he doesn't care what device he uses. He doesn't care what cloud he's going to send data to, right? He needs to be able to buy this now, be able to apply it to whatever applications he, he has, and then take that up the stack, right? Because he's going to now need to report to Walmart, hey, I shipped my vegetables in a reusable crate, and we, at t was monitoring the temperature of that, right? It moved in, moved into the distribution center, got cut up. So to him, if he resides on some kind of blockchain for food, he wants to get paid immediately because he says, my vegetables checked in at, at, at 50 degrees. I should get change. Close out my blockchain, right? Close out my transaction on the blockchain. The bank will pay me, right? Then it moves to the shipper, right? 
So is that shipper have a containerize where he was now had a refrigerated reefer, or was it on some guy's truck? Right. The minute that that you get a violation on one of some of the, one of these devices, that product is now spoiled. You need to cut that off and reject it. Right. So there's real world applications that the simplest minds need to be able to say, I need to figure this out. How do I do it cheaply, easily, and be able to scale this? Thank you. I'm, I'm a big, big believer in the Internet of Things. Uh, the biggest reason, there's no infrastructure cost. You could have an embedded device put in a bin, tote, pallet, whatever, and the second it arrives, it's working. It's collecting data actionable data. Uh, so it, it eliminates all kinds of costs there. Now, depending on your supply chain and your customer needs or your needs, think of this. I, with, with everything from barcodes, RFID tags, to IoT track and trace devices, you now can associate your product to your container. If it's a tote with seeds, whatever, it, it's there. If it's a pallet and you've got 42 boxes of Kraft macaroni and cheese, you could put it on there. With the Internet of Things, you know what's on that pallet. With some of the devices that's in this white paper, you know when a product's taken off. You, you could literally ship this to a customer and through the Internet of Things and the blockchain technologies, which is basically, in my mind, huge security, allows you to transfer you know, invoice a customer, pay a, you know, get paid by that customer, all because you have a smart asset. And that's basically what the technology is. Taking all the assets we have and making them talk to each other into one simple system that you can look at. And if you think about it, the, the real big picture down the road, uh, and when I say down the road, it's probably not that far. I, I mentioned it before, artificial intelligence. All this information could go into one system, and, and as corny as it sounds, but it's just press start. You don't have to do anything else. It's all there. You could do inventory management. You could do, you know, if turn rates of your products. You know when your customer is about to be out of stock. You probably know more about your customer's business than they do. But, but that's what's available right now. Now, the, the challenge is, and I, I was walking down the aisles like everybody else, and I overheard some conversations, and I heard something just, it was like chalk, you know, it's your fingernails on a chalkboard. Oh, my customer won't pay for that. Why are we making decisions with such great things happening right now for our customers? We have got to show them solutions, listen to our customers, find out what they really want to achieve, and there's now solutions to help them get there. And they're affordable. It may be a little bit more than what they're currently buying, but if you appropriately explain the benefits of all this to them, I think they're going to use it. I really do. I'm way down in the trenches from these guys. Uh, uh, so the, the trend, the original question was what, what trends are we seeing? What I'm seeing when I'm in the, in the factories is uh, how do we reduce the number of people that touch an item as it moves from A to B, and how is that going to affect uh, the technology that we're putting in? Um, so as we take fewer people, now, now the container that the product is in, whether it's food, uh, machine parts, or whatever, it has to be able to handle the trip not just once, but it has to be handled many times. Uh, things as simple as putting a label on a box now become more complicated because where a box gives, plastic doesn't. Uh, you have to make sure you have the right technology simply to apply a label. You have to make sure you have the right technology that's going to read the various types of barcodes. So the trend is basically less people, but your infrastructure has to be there to handle that product as it's moving through. And that goes back to the original question as well of you know, when we get started down these roads, what things do we have to take into account? So, so it's, a, it's a good... Uh Good transition. Um, so one thing I'd like each of you to do is go through and, and give me a real world example of uh, how a particular technology was applied and how it either 
made somebody money, saved somebody money, gained some efficiency. Uh, what's, a, what's a good kind of case study for uh, applying a, a new technology to a reusable packaging and have a, an ROI that was measurable? Do you want to go first? It's nice because this one didn't actually, uh, I wasn't even part of this one, so it, it was just something I stumbled across in, in one of the plants as they were, uh, started using uh, reusable combos. Uh, basically, uh, other people call them Gaylords, 4x4x4 four by four by four, uh, that you, you drop meat in or, or any other product. Uh, in the past, they were using cardboard uh, with uh, plastic liners. Uh, they went to the reusable type, which uh, still pertains to we want to know where those things are. Uh, and it, I think it cut their cost on the combos something like 40 to 60 percent. Wow, that's fantastic. Uh, there's, there's several, but one very simple one is uh, track and trace of a pallet. Uh, had some product on it, they couldn't find it uh, in, in the past. Uh, it had out of code product, but just simply to be able to say that pallet that you thought was in Chicago is actually in Toronto. And even though your systems say everything, here's the proof, here's where it is. And by the way, based on the temperature of that pallet, your product's probably not usable. Uh, and that's just a simple way. And that's happening right now. There, there are many people in here using that technology. Great. Great. Yeah, and so we talked about the, the, I'm the $10 a month question, right? So, you know, us going to like a, a beverage manufacturer, right, and saying, hey, we're going to IoT your cooler and we're going to be able to give you the temperature and the condition of the product as well as tell you when it's going to break, right? That may be a small subset of, of that $10. So I can go to the operations guy and, and say, hey, for $4 a month, I'm going to give you all those features, right? Still doesn't pay for the 10 How we go to the $10, right, and when you're talking about IoT pro, IoT uh, projects you want to work on, right? It takes it takes um, it takes a village, basically, right? Because when we do ideation sessions, which is we have customers come in, we want a marketing guy, we want a sales guy, we want a user, we want people there who's going to use this IoT solution, right? So I'm going to go to the CMO and say, hey, because now when I stick a camera on that cooler, whether it's ice cream, whether it's a beverage, or what have you. I'm going to be able to tell you now, here are all the interactions with your customer with this cooler, right? If I open the door for two seconds, what does that mean? Somebody's probably buying a product out there, right? If the door is open for 15 minutes, what does that mean? Probably somebody's filling the cooler, right? But the minute that I add vision now, right, taking a camera, every two hours I'm taking a picture, I'm now giving you the inventory, right? Because now I can tell a blueberry, blueberry ice cream versus a haagen ice cream versus, versus a Red Bull can, of, can of, of drink, right? And I can tell you how much inventory is left, you know, by percentage, right? So, so it happened to be when we were working on one of our coolers out in San Francisco, the distributor was there. He'd, had he known that I took a picture two hours ago, he didn't have to bring all this ice cream, right? All this package packets and boxes of ice cream out there because he was 80% full, right? So, so the need and the requirements are there and the use cases of who's going to actually pay for this, we're solving them today already. So it's a good point. And uh, just to kind of round out the final uh, question, which is where do you start? So if, you, if this sounds intriguing and you think you might want to uh, either convert from one way to reusable or take your reusables and make them smarter by uh, adding technology to them, where do you start? And so uh, Gail touched on a little bit where uh, it's usually got to be led by somebody who has a problem they think can be solved through this adaptation. And so the central question is, what steps would you suggest starting with to make a decision about what type of technology uh, you might need. So for me, it's usually around uh, the business case. Finding a, a problem that has a quantifiable aspect to it. How much is it costing you to do things the way you're doing it now? Or what's the opportunity cost? What could you do more efficiently to gain to if you uh, use a certain technology? 
So you, I think you're going to have to start at least in the, in the very beginning with something that's quantifiable to know that if the solution turns out to be that $10 a month, what does that mean? Is it affordable? Can I make 50 or can I save 50 if I spend 10? Or is it a $2 solution or a $2 problem I'm trying to solve and it's going to cost me 10? So you have to start, I think, for me, with a business case that you can quantify before you can start down the road of knowing uh, what types of technology and therefore what costs you could sustain to try to solve that problem. So you want to just kind of go down the, the line and like where would you tell someone to start if they were going to think about adding? Yeah, so depending on your business, you know, it's really an operational thing, right? So um, when I was in San Francisco too, you know, there was a potato chip delivery team there, right? And so they were delivering, it was 7 a.m. at CVS. And I just like, oh, well, let me talk to them because I'm working on some stuff for them. And, and, I'm, and then I asked them, I'm like, hey, so, you know, how do you guys manage your inventory at the store and how do you know where? Well, they force us to stop at a Walgreens and a CVS and such, right? And just trying to understand the day in the life of, of operations, right? And, you know, by the time he goes into the store, takes his inventory, goes back to the truck, come back out, that could be a 30 minute turn, right? And the issue was not just how much inventory he has and how many potato chips he's selling. The issue they have is an HR issue, right? Because nobody in San Francisco wants to drive a truck for $15 in the middle of traffic, crossing the bridge and stopping and trying to park this big, big truck in San Francisco in the middle of the day, right? And only make 25 cents a bag, right? So they don't have enough staff to do that. So they're driving and flying people in to cover the routes, right? So, so that is an issue that started from HR to say, hey, wait, what do you, why don't we have enough drivers in this local area, right? And so IoT can solve that, but you have to understand where, where is the business heading, what are some of our issues that we currently see in the field, and how do we solve for them? So I think you know, the one interesting part about that is that you're, you're going back to getting more people in the room yeah. to talk about that, where it, it may be seen by an HR person as, here's my problem, and they have yeah. no idea that that might be even addressed through yeah. any technology on any packaging. If you involve other parts of the organization that are probably more informed about the day in the life of that driver and all the different things that he or she is touching, the types of packaging, pallets, how they move physically on and off a truck, what they take in and to the store, that whole day in the life of the end user uh, probably touches a whole bunch of different departments. So it's a good place to start would be who all has a stake Correct. in the life of that driver. Because if right? you're a technology seller or something, it, you're, you're selling, you can't just sell to the IT department, right? You can't tell them, I'm going to sell you a Salesforce license or a service cloud license or whatever. That doesn't solve anything unless you know the actual, actual problem of the business. Well, like, like most things, I think the idea is that these are all interconnected and that what one person might see as only their problem probably has some kind of ripple effect through the whole organization. So, uh, David, where, where would you start? Since we're here at reusable packaging, one of the common denominators for all of us is lost assets, right? So I'd probably start with taking a look at what are your loss rates or your customers' loss rates, and can I, by putting tracking devices in these assets, make a, a quick uh, improvement which will show a, a very quick ROI, which will show how the technology is working. Start with a pilot program. Find a customer that you know is forward thinking and is probably a little ticked off that he's buying a $300 bin and he's losing 10% of them. Uh, and, and, and like I said, there's no infrastructure. You get your hands on some of these devices, uh, you work through AT&T, which connect like this. It's a very simple process. And you're up and running with a pilot program. Start. So Ernest before was telling us about his sprint walk, sprint run walk approach, which I was curious about. If you would mind sharing uh, that. It, and everybody, everybody uh, hates change, right? So when you're looking at a, at a new uh, project, uh, we like to sprint to the, the easiest win we can get that's going to have the biggest impact. So 
what's something simple that we can do that's going to impact and show the technology and, and get you in the door. Uh, after we sprint to that, we're going to walk to the next slightly more complicated project where uh, we're going to expand on the technology. Uh, and then uh, the crawl aspect is after you've done the first two, now, now you're in there and you can take on the elephant. You can, you can look, work with the, the more complicated projects because now you're, you're, a, you're either a trusted provider or if you're the end user in this case, we've established the trust with you so that you, c you can move forward with a great deal of confidence. So uh, we'd be happy to take any questions that anybody has. Um, I, I did have a copy of the white paper. It's kind of thick. It's not a paper. It's a book. Uh, but it's online. You can download it for free. And, um, but if you have any questions, we'll field them. Sure. Okay, so is it for any, anyone on the panel? Oh, yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi. This is for anyone on the panel. What do you see? Um, as far as trends um, by industry for technology? Do you see certain industries that are leading and are, you, are they moving towards certain types of technology and why is that? Uh, I, I definitely see uh, I industries that have a lot of perishable aspects to it, pharmaceutical, uh, agriculture, produce, uh, cannabis, uh, you have industries with some high profit margins that are making money now that are just setting up their infrastructure, setting up their, their supply chains so they get to do it right from the start are looking at these technologies in a very big way. I would, I would agree that uh, produce is probably one of the areas where you can get the biggest bang for the buck because at the moment, I think something like 25% of produce is thrown out because of spoilage. A lot of that has to do with how long it takes to get from the field to the store. And if you can find ways to track and improve the conditions during that time or shorten that time from nine days to six or whatever, it's a pretty quick ROI on that. And so those kinds of uh, perishables, I think, are going to probably see among the earliest adapters um, as we go ahead. So. Yeah, from a from a Hello. Okay. Sorry. From a, a, a IoT perspective, we're probably the, the manufacturing, retail. Um, those are usually the easiest use cases because there's some outside factor that you know government regulations or uh, a company like Walmart is now demanding that this needs to be pushed down to the retail stores, and everybody has to play play with it, right? For us, we're we're agnostic to clouds and things like that. So if I have this same device and Walmart says, well, we only use the IBM cloud, I can take this, still, this same device and put it on Azure, put it on AWS, put it on any cloud out there to send that data. to. So to us, we follow the trends, but we also like to try to introduce new things to see if the market will accept it. That's also a good, a good point is that uh, the more closed the system, like Walmart is famous for owning the whole supply chain or a lot of the, at least transportation and warehousing part of that. So uh, when you have a closed system that you control most of the components, they're probably going to be the earliest ones to make those changes. When you have a distributed system where you've got multiple parties across different companies and vendors, it's a lot harder to push through everybody to get on the same boat depending on which technology you're using. If it involves anything having to do with installing scanners or infrastructure, it's going to be really difficult to incentivize them to make those changes because it costs money and you can only push so much when it's a vendor relationship. So uh, that's probably you know, another factor.